redemption belongs to our God, who sits upon the throne, and unto the Lamb, praise and glory, wisdom and thanks, honor and In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, it's good for us to be here to worship the one true God on this feast of all saints, when we call to mind all of our spiritual heroes during this month in November. Let us prepare our hearts, our minds, and souls to worship God by first acknowledging our sins. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of reconciliation with you, for which we earnestly long, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw an angel 
ascending from the rising of the sun, having the seal of the living God. And he called out with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to damage the earth and sea, saying, Do not damage the earth or the sea or the trees until we have marked the servants of our God with a seal on their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000, sealed out of every tribe of the people of Israel. After this, I looked and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, who are these robed in white and where have they come from? And I said to him, sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. The word of the Lord. Lord, this is the company of those who seek your face. Lord, this is the company of those who seek your face. This is the Lord and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it, for he has founded it on the seas and established it on the river lord this is the company of those who seek your face who shall ascend the hill of the lord and who shall stand in his holy place someone who has clean hands and a pure heart who does not lift up their soul to what is false. Lord, this is the company of those who seek your faith. That person will receive blessing from the Lord, vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, this is the company of those who seek your face. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what the love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we have has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have hope in God purify themselves just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come to me, all you 
without a worry and heavy burden. I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise because All Saints Day falls on Sunday this year, we celebrate it as our Sunday liturgy which is a wonderful opportunity as we begin the month of November. The month of November when we are called to think about, reflect upon our spiritual heroes, all the saints, all those that have been declared by the church and all those that have not been declared by the church but have lived a good, faithful, holy life and dwell in the very presence of God. All of our deceased relatives, etc. all of these people. And then on November 2nd, All Souls Day, we commemorate, uh, commemorate all the deceased. And we entrust them to the mercy and the love and the compassion of God. And we pray that they may be, they will experience the fullness of God's presence in the heavenly kingdom. And throughout the month of November, it is an opportunity for us to pray for our deceased loved ones. It's a calling, it's a remembering to pray for them during this month. The readings today speak to us about what it means to be, in essence, a saint. A saint, someone who dwells in the presence of God, someone who is in union with God, someone who has lived a good, holy, and faith-filled life. So what does it mean then to be in union with God? What does it mean to embrace God's will? Well, it means, in essence, what is God's will? Well, God is love, in essence. His will is for us to love one another as Jesus taught us, to love one another as I have loved you. What does that love look like? That is the most perfect, selfless love. A love that desires the absolute good of the other. A love that wants the other, in essence, to become the person that God has created them to be. And what does it mean to be a saint is when we become the person that God has created us to be. Living in union with him. Striving to do his will. Becoming the person that he's created us to be. You know, when we think of the lives of the saints, sometimes we can have an incredibly idealistic view of them. You know, we look at St. Thomas Aquinas, one of the greatest minds of the church, and we think, well, I can never do that. Or we look at some of the other great saints, Mother Teresa, and we're like, gosh, I could never do that. Well, but that's not, they're not the only saints. Then we have saints like Brother Andre, Brother Andre, who was not a great academic at all, as a matter of fact, couldn't make it through his studies. His education was incredibly limited, 
And God also chose to work through him to do great things and to build up the body of Christ. We see others and many others, St. John Vianney, the patron saint of priests who almost wasn't ordained because he really couldn't do his studies. But the greatest of, and you know, hundreds of thousands of people would go to this little village, this little outpost where he was to go to confession, to be reconciled to God. And of course, he could even read their souls. So, you know, when you go to confession and you're thinking, well, maybe I will or maybe I won't mention that. Well, well, he just tell them what it was. Yeah. A little disconcerting, isn't it, people? But what a beautiful grace that God had bestowed upon this man. Humble, simple, faith-filled. And what was he doing? He was becoming the person that God had created him to be, not with our worldly limitations. So what does that look like for each of us? That's what Jesus teaches us today in the gospel. And he gives us the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit. You see, the poor in spirit aren't just the physically poor, but they're those who understand that every single thing they have, every gift they have, every talent, every ability is only a gift from God. I shouldn't say only. It is a gift from God that we are called to be thankful for and honor and cherish. And the way we truly show God our appreciation is we use these gifts not just for our own good, but for the good of the world in which we live, the good of our community to build up the body of Christ, the kingdom of God here on earth. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn. You know, it's not some kind of, oh, just, you know, the official mourners. It's No, it's those that actually love. Those that have loved one another as I have loved you. You only mourn if you have compassion, if you have empathy, if you're willing to suffer with others. And blessed are those who mourn, who mourn because they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek. You know, our society thinks power is such a great thing. And unfortunately, most people in power abuse it. Blessed are the meek. Those who realize that the ultimate power comes from God and all we are called to do with that power is use it for the good of others and not for ourselves, but to try and benefit and build up. Blessed are the merciful. Mercy. You know, we're St. Faustina Parish. We are called to embrace this virtue of mercy, to live it. We are called to be people who show mercy to others. And as Jesus says, if we show mercy... Mercy, which isn't some nice, you know, theoretical, but it's down in the, you know, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, shelter the homeless. It's getting your hands dirty, you know, educating those, you know, praying for the dead is a spiritual work of mercy. Praying for the living and the dead, you know, and to do these real concrete things that build up each other, to help each other. What does it mean to be holy? We all have a capacity to do these things in a way that is appropriate to us, based on what God has entrusted to us. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the pure in heart. You know, purity is a beautiful thing. Purity means that we have a clear focus, and what we are trying to do is live our life with this clear focus of loving and serving God as we love and serve our brothers and sisters. A clear focus. You know, when our life is in harmony, there is a true sense of peace and purity because we know what we're called to live, we know what will bring us happiness, and we've been able to embrace it and live that way, and our life becomes it's harmonious. We are at peace. And when we live our life that way, we are being faithful to who God has created us to be. We are loving our brothers and sisters the way Christ has loved us. And we are bringing harmony, not just in ourselves, but we're sharing it with the world in which we live. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. You know, righteousness gets a bad rap these days. Oh, you're being righteous. Righteous, desiring to live rightly, desiring to think rightly, desiring to treat others rightly, correctly. 
And blessed are you when people persecute you and revile you just because you are living according to the way of God. Your reward will be great in heaven. You know, when we strive to do what is right, many people will call and challenge us because it can make them feel uncomfortable. Not because we're extolling it over them or holding it over them, but just because our example is challenging possibly their way of life or challenging them to take another step in their faith journey. And that's how we make a difference in this world. All Saints Day, when we reflect on our spiritual heroes, you know, on our website, we have our Book of Remembrance this year, an electronic version of it, which is wonderful. And many people have already put their names on and we will pray for our deceased loved ones all the way through uh, the month of November. But we're here not just to talk about the saints, but we're here with the saints. As St. Paul will say, we have such an incredible cloud of witnesses. We are about to worship God. Jesus Christ, the second person of the Trinity, is going to make himself present to you and me in the Eucharist. And where God is, that first reading, that great choir of those who have washed their robes white in the blood of the Lamb, well, they are worshiping the one true God with us when we celebrate the Eucharist. We are surrounded by all the angels, the saints, the martyrs, those that have gone before us. They are here with us, worshiping God with us. They are united with us as we pray in our creed. I believe in the communion of saints. We are in communion, community, still with them. We are one with them. We ask them to pray for us. We seek their intercession. Today, as we celebrate the Eucharist, let us be more mindful of all those who are with us here, celebrating with us. Let us also be mindful of who we receive when we receive communion. The very person of Jesus Christ who wants to become and come into a more intimate relationship with you and me so that we then can go forth and live these beatitudes, living our life in union with Christ and in union with God's will so that we can go forth and show his love, his mercy, his meekness, his compassion to the world in which we live. My brothers and sisters, in response to God's word, in response to God's love for each and every one of us, let us now proudly profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. To God the Father Almighty, dear brothers and sisters, may every prayer of our heart be directed. For his will it is that all humanity should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. 
The intention for today's Mass is for the parishioners of St. Faustina Church. We pray for Pope Francis, all bishops, priests, and deacons. May we be ever seeking purity of heart in order to see the face of God in every person we meet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the leaders of the nations, that they would seek first the kingdom of God and fill the world with peace and justice of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we, as St. Faustina Parish, remember our own call to live lives reflecting God's holiness, mercy, and peace as both individuals and as a community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deeper appreciation of our baptism, that we find our deepest value and source of dignity in being children of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick among our families and friends, especially Brenda Rose, Kathleen Kendall, Al Jelano, Doug Goodwin, Kathleen Lacroix, Doris McDonald, Rob Patterson, Margaret McGrath, Sharon Pichy, and any others who are ill but not included by name. May Christ bless them and heal them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Alphonse Mayhew, Aurora Green, Robert Rideout, and all those named in our Book of Remembrance, may Christ welcome them into eternal glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church. For you yourself are the source of all devotion, and grant we pray that what we ask in faith we may truly obtain through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already give you eternal praise. Toward her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church, through whom you give us, in our frailty, both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Oh. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. You are indeed holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Terence, our Bishop, Marcel, his coadjutor, bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Oh, grant us, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the Lord, upon the living Holy Spirit, through your death, gave life to the world, free me by this most holy body and blood from all my sins and from every evil king. I was faithful to your commandments and have not been departed from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. During this time, when we are unable to receive the Eucharist, you are encouraged to make an act of spiritual communion, and you're invited to join me. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Blessed are they, the poor in spirit, Theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they, full of sorrow, they shall be consoled. Rejoice and be glad. Blessed are you, holy are you. Rejoice and be glad. Yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they, the lowly ones, they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they, who hunger and thirst, they shall have their fill. And be glad. Blessed are you, blessed holy are you. Rejoice, rejoice and be glad. Yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they who show mercy, mercy shall be there. Blessed are they, the pure of heart, they shall see God. 
We adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints. We implore your grace so that, coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace. Glorifying the Lord by the way we live our lives. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Share the light of his name, we are children of the light. As the wind blows where it will, spread the news to everyone, there's still plenty of time, for we have just begun. We are children, children of the light, we are shining. Darkness of the night, hope for this world. Joy through all the land, touch the heart of everyone, take everybody's hand.